In this video, we're going to look at two different ways you can create duplicate retopo meshes here in 3D Coats Retopo Workspace. The first method for creating copies is to utilize symmetry, whether we're working in a radial array or whether we're working across a simple axis plane. You can elect to enable symmetry so it's copying as you're working, or you can disable it and apply it later on in the process using a sim copy option that we'll look at here momentarily. The second major method for creating copies in 3D Coat is to utilize the clone tool. This comes in handy especially when your object or objects may not be symmetrically aligned. This could also be the case if you happen to have an object that is very similar in many regards but doesn't quite share the same scale nor the same orientation in the scene. Now, when you're working with symmetry, there are a few things to keep in mind. One is whenever you're working near the symmetry plane, you want to turn your mirror snapping up. I find that anywhere between 20 and 40 is usually a good starting point. But what's going to happen is if you don't have any mirror snapping, this is the same thing as welding. Okay, 3D Coat is going to weld the vertices together if they're within a given range or a given distance from this symmetry plane. Make sure to do that because if you don't, then you're going to have a lot of cleanup to do later on when you realize those vertices didn't get welded. Now you've got a little bit of a mess to have to clean up. So that's number one. Number two is what mode are you going to work in? If you work in virtual mirror mode, this is basically preview mode. And what that means is, as I'm creating, it looks like 3D Coat is actually copying the mesh over as I'm working, but it's not. It's just showing a mirrored preview. So if you prefer to create live symmetrical copies as you're working, then you want to turn that virtual mirror mode off. Now in this particular scene, I could elect to work on just this one individual object in standard axis mirror mode, and once I'm done with that, copy everything in a radial fashion using the sim copy tool, but I don't think I will in this case. Let's turn our radial symmetry on, and the next thing we want to look at is radial order. So this is the number of copies we want to create. So I've got 16 total objects here, so I'm going to enter in 16 and then the axis type which includes the standard world-based action center and then your local object-based centers. I chose the y-axis in world space and you can see the highlighted pivot point right in the center as well as all the individual points highlighting where the instances will be placed. So let me now switch to orthographic view I could also do that by hitting the 5 key on the number pad. And I'll go to a top view here. And that would also be the 8 key on your number pad. I do that so that I don't have any perspective distortion to be concerned with. All right. And I'm going to switch to the strokes tool. I'm going to click outside the object on one end. And if I want a perfectly straight line, I can hold the shift key and 3D Coat will constrain it in 45 degree increments. So I'm going to rotate my object once more. I'll do the same thing here. Hold the shift key. All right. So I need one cross section here. Just going to click and drag. I'm not going to be real concerned about how straight it is at this point. Hold the control key and continue the line. I can just click to create individual points. Let's come up here to our number of segments and by default it's set at 12 but we want more than that so I chose 24. And that's how many segments around this object it will create. I'll hit enter. And there you have it. As you can see, that would have taken quite a bit of time doing it one by one manually. 
Now, I could either delete the layer here and create a new one, or I could click on this icon to select all faces on layer. I can hit the delete key, then it'll delete it. Actually, I'll undo and try one more thing here. I'm going to turn symmetry off. And you'll notice, as soon as I turn symmetry off, what happened to all my polygons? They're not there anymore. Well, that's because I had virtual mirror mode turned on. So what would happen is, if I didn't want virtual mirror mode on, and I wanted real polygons like that, then I would simply turn that off. And now I can enable symmetry. And I'll choose make symmetrical copy. So this allows you to apply symmetry instead of as you're working, it does it after the fact or later on in the process. So now when I click on that, we have real polygons. So as soon as I click on this select all faces on layer icon, you can see that all these instances indeed reside on the same layer. If I want to apply my UVs now, Whatever seams I select here, as long as I have symmetry turned on, it's going to apply the same seams on these other objects as well. So that's our look at using symmetry to create duplicates. Now let's look at using the clone tool. I'll go ahead and hide this layer for now, and then click on the create new layer icon. Scratch that. I think I'll just reuse this layer and utilize the select tool. I'm going to turn off symmetry. And I'll choose uh, Freeform Lasso. And so what I want to do is select everything. But this. I'm going to hit the Delete key. And if you have an instance where you've got a retopple mesh that you've created for one shape on your model, but you want to apply a copy somewhere else on that model, it's just not symmetrical or maybe it's not the same scale, maybe it's not oriented in the same way, then what you can do is choose clone, but you need to select the faces first. So you can either use the select tool to do that, or again, choose all faces on layer. Okay, so I could hit escape to drop the selection, and I could just select that part and choose clone, and 3D Coat would allow me to clone it. So I'll hit escape to drop that tool, and I'll choose select all faces on layer. And so yeah, let's choose clone. And now 3D Coat is giving me like a preview object. It's almost as if I were using the Retapo Mesh presets here, the models palette. And then you can move it about inside your scene using the transform gizmo here, where you can scale, move, and rotate. This is probably a little tougher example than uh, you might typically encounter. Okay, let's choose main axis. I can hold the shift key to move the axis to realign it if I need on the fly. Okay, and a little bit more tweaking here. There we go. So yeah, once we're happy, then uh, we just have to hit the Enter key. We don't have to create a new layer or anything because 3D Coat's going to do that for us. So I'll hit the Enter key, and 3D Coat's asking, do you want to snap this to the underlying voxel object or no? In this case, let's say no. And so it just created a new layer for me. Now I should mention as a side note that you may have noticed when I hit enter 3D Coat created some additional blank copies of the other layers and obviously that's not what I wanted. However, that's just a small bug that has been reported Andrew and subsequently fixed. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention. And with that, we will conclude this demonstration of creating copies and clones in 3D Coat's Retopo workspace. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.